Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am super excited about today's video. Something I just thought about on the run that I have just done and it is this. If you're going overseas or you're traveling just far from home, might be up the road a couple of hundred k's or as I say overseas, there's always time and energy spent thinking about what shoes are you going to take? Which of your running shoes are you going to take? And uh, I think Think we're all guilty of taking too many pairs of shoes so really if you were only to take one pair what could you or should you think about taking so let's go through my range of running shoes and boil it down to just one pair so there's going to be a number of shoes I'm going to go through some of them you're going to have um, maybe maybe not we're going to go through them super fast we're going to compare them against each other and we're going to get a winner. So the shoe that I'll take, if I was to take only one pair overseas. Now, let's take for granted, oh, I say overseas, yeah, it could be, as I say, a couple of hundred k's or a hundred k's up the road or, or down. You're going away, you're going away from home. Now, let's take for granted that this trip isn't for a race. If it is specifically for a race, and I mean a top level race for you, it's one of your big two or three in the calendar, obviously then you're going to be taking more shoes, I think. You're going to be taking a speed work shoe, you're going to be taking a daily trainer, or at least an easy day shoe, and of course your race shoe. You might even take two pairs of race shoes. So that aside, you're just going for a trip, but you want to keep your running going and your training. So let's go through it. So, 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 if it's not a race, Something like your Vaporfly. Oh no, I just dropped a shoe. I'm going to have to pick up in a second. Vaporfly Model 3, you're not going to take that. Yes, I know you're going to still, you know, do the park run tourism thing and that's fine, but you don't need to get a PB at a new event. And especially, in, unless you're really made of money, you don't want to go to an event where you don't know the terrain that might wrap up the shoe a little bit or, or you know, or it might not grip properly or whatever. Don't take your Vaporfly 3. So that's out, that's out straight away. Okay, and I think the same can be said for, in this case, this is my Essex S4. Again, carbon plated, all oh, that stiff as. Great for training on the track, but I mean, if I was to do my easy miles in this or anything else um, between easy miles up to just under threshold work, then I wouldn't be using this. So that knocks out a whole lot of stuff. The grip is great, but the grip is great on the surfaces I've used it for, which are flat, smooth, and fast. Bit of exposed, of course, midsole there coming through to complement the outsole. Could get shredded up, depending on what I'm running on. S4, love it, that's out, that's gone. Okay, what else are we looking at? Let's grab this one. So what we've got is the As oh, Adidas Adizero SL. So use this for training, especially for hill work. I don't know if those of you that have used this shoe feel the same way as I do about it. I think it's perfect for hill work because it's pretty grippy. Um, and, and this is the big one, when you're coming down the hill, it's super soft in the heel. Super soft. Now I'm a mid to four foot striker. Um, didn't used to be. Used to be a heel striker. Things changed over time. But what I find coming down the hill, of course you, you are hitting, everyone's a heel striker coming down the hill by and large. Or at least you're moving further back in the shoe. Because the back of the shoe is so nice and soft and plush, it feels spongy when you're coming down on your heels. And it really takes care of your legs on the downhill, ready for the uphill. But this... I think this shoe's out because if you do want to go along to a park run and give it a little bit of a nudge, I don't think this shoe will do that for you. This shoe's going to go up to about midway in terms of um, all your training sessions. So from your easy runs, maybe, maybe a long run, though I can't imagine taking this on say a 15 to 20k run. So yeah, up to that midpoint, your yeah, threshold work and, and getting into doing maybe a race or two or giving, as I say, a park run a really good nudge or something, probably wouldn't use that. So that's out. Okay, so what have we got left? Okay, all right. Yeah, now, 
This was a really interesting one for me. So, it is plated. I haven't said the name of the shoe. It's just gone out of my head. It's not the Evo Ride. It is not the Evo Ride. Oh gosh, what is it? Okay, look, I'll um... <sighs> anyway, anyway. It's not the Evo Ride. It's the... Ah, this is bad video. Alright, let's just keep moving. I'll, um, I'll find out the name and I'll plug it up right now. Boom. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It is plated. It is a good trainer um, in terms of it's quite versatile. Um, I, because, because of the shape of the shoe, it's really good for high cadence. So it is a specific sort of, of trainer. Um, could you use it then for low, slow runs? Yeah, you can. Would you use it as something to do medium distance or or your long runs? Yeah, intervals, yes. And would I take it out for a bit of a, you know, give it a bit of a nudge? Probably yes. But it's a bit sluggish for all of those things. Um, it is versatile. I'm really sort of 50-50. Okay, this one makes it through to the next round. This one makes it through to the next round. But what I will say is because it's got a plate on it, then if you're going to do some workouts, so if, say you're away for a week and you've got a gym routine um, where you're doing your legs twice a week in the gym as part of your running training, you wouldn't take this to the gym because of the plate. Because, yeah, if you're doing calf raises or anything like that, I find the plate can be, can be a bit of a mess. But this makes it through to the next round. All right. All right, let's roll on. Now forgive me, let me pick up the shoe from down here. I think we're getting into the ones now that we're going to really start to consider. This is the Streak Fly. This is good. This is a versatile shoe. Um, easy recovery run? Absolutely. I think it's absolutely underrated for that. It's got a plate in it. It's not a plate though, it's a shank. So you can see as I twist the shoe, it sort of bends at these two points. The shank sits just in here. So it's not a full plated shoe, so that works. Can you do, you know, your long run in it? No, no you can't actually. I, the maximum I can get out of the shoe is about 12 kilometers and after that my legs start to go a bit messy. That's its only downfall. If you're going to do a race or a park run and give it a nudge, it's perfect for that too. Can you warm up in it? Absolutely. Warm down in it? No drama. So you don't have to change the shoe. So this makes it through to the next round. Can you take it to the gym? Yeah, same sort of problems as the Essex I've just talked about. But yeah, this will not do your long run. So if you're looking to do anything, 12 kilometers or more, I think in a long run, that's going to fall short in terms of your trip. Okay. All right. All right. What else have we got here? Let's just grab this one randomly. Here we go. Ooh. Nova Blast 3. I know the Nova Blast 4 is out. I don't need it yet. This thing is 500 kilometers old and it is going well. It is a do everything shoe. But as you might know about the Nova Blast 3, it is good on concrete and in the dry only. It's still a bit of a slippery beast. Though once you've got about 100 kilometers in these shoes, and you take a couple of, you take the, the layer, the outside layer off the outer, um, it does get a, a bit more grippy. Um, it's only when it's super new that it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit slippery underfoot. So that's a definite yes. The other good thing about this shoe too is there is a lot of midsole exposed, but even in, as you can see here, there's a lot of wear. Even with a lot of wear and it getting ripped up a little bit, it doesn't affect the performance of the shoe. Might look a bit ugly, doesn't worry me. Shoes are tools. It's about where my body's at, not how good my shoes look. So that doesn't worry, uh, worry me. Definitely makes it through to the next round. Okay, okay. And actually, um, no, let's put two shoes head to head. These two, if I was to take one, it'll be the Nova Blast 3. So this shoe is now out. Eliminate it. Now what I'm going to do with the next shoe, I'm going to pick randomly. Here we go. What have we got here? The Invincible, the Nike Invincible 3. 
I'm going to put this head to head now with the streak fly. So I'm going to knock one of these two shoes out. What do I like about the Invincible? Unless you're really worried about your park run time, if you're going away on a trip and you're doing, say, a park run or a race, it's not going to be a big race for you, but you want to give it a bit of a nudge, you're not going to go super fast in the shoe, but you're not going to go super slow. And consider the fact you might be doing a park run with a family member you've never run with before, and you might be a much better runner, so you're going to be running a lot slower than you usually do anyway in park run. You don't have to go, you know, all out, you could be supporting someone else. If that's the case, this shoe is going to tick some boxes. It's going to tick a lot of boxes. Recovery shoe, absolutely. Easy day shoe, your everyday trainer, absolutely. I've done that. Long distance, uh, you know, your long run shoe, 20 kilometers. Yeah, thresholds. I've done thresholds in it. Yeah, it feels a bit, you know, a bit clunky, a bit too spongy out in the foot. And same with I've raced in it. But the other, so it's not going to be 100% for that, but it is versatile. And the other good thing about it is actually the traction on the bottom is really good for a little bit of off-road. So if you've run on a surface that's a bit stony or just a, a dirt path or something like that, I think your Invincible is going to be mighty. In fact, decision made, because you can long run on this, you can't in the streak fly. Streak fly goes, invincible three goes through. So, okay, we've got two through. We've got the, um, <laughs> so it's Nova Blast three and uh, the invincible three. Oh, okay, hey, the two threes. Right, right. Two more shows. Got the Nimbus. Okay, so the Nimbus pretty much like the invincible in terms of its versatility. You can run everything in it. Can you race in it? Yeah, you can, but it gets a little bit sluggish when you're doing the threshold work and you're doing something like your, you know, your park run if you're giving it a really good nudge. But I think the most important thing is if you're on the trip, can you race in something like this? Yes, you can, but you'd rather have this to race in than a race shoe to try and do a recovery run in because that will that just won't work. So you know, something like um, the S4 that we had up before and the Vapor Fly 3, not going to work for your recovery runs. So this will be a do-everything shoe. Can, so can you take this away and do something with it? Absolutely. The It's a grippy, it is a grippy um, outsole. A lot of midsole foam exposed. So if you're going to run over some um, rocks and all of that sort of thing, be prepared to get it a little bit ripped up. Again, it won't affect the performance. I have done quite a bit on the shoot in terms of just not abused it, but just run over it, everything. And it actually still doesn't look too bad. There's no big, t you know, uh, pockets, pockets, where things have been torn out of it. Little holes, nothing like that. So that's cool. Actually, let me put these two head to head, all right? Because these two would go head to head. What would I rather take? <sighs> Do you know what? I don't think you can go wrong. I don't think you can go wrong with either. I think with either, you're, you're pretty good. I'm probably leaning towards the Invincible. The Invincible only because the shoe's more comfortable. The Invincible, I think, gives you a little bit more if you want to give it a bit of a nudge. Where this is a, this is a bit more springy in the Vincible with the Zoom X foam, where what we've got um, in the Flight Foam Blast Plus is more a dampening sort of feeling. So it sort of cushions your stride, but doesn't give you a bit of a pop back. Is that important or not? Don't know. Both these shoes will do the same in terms of taking care of your legs, but I'd probably take the Vincible and it's outsole coverage, probably a little bit better if you if you do find yourself running off-road a little bit. Okay, okay, so let's park the, if you love the Nimbus, I'm not saying it's, you know, you might pick it over the Invincible. All right, so we're still down to the Invincible and the Nova Blast, um, and let's bring the third, well, what will be now the third and final one, and that is the Super Blast. We're the Super Blast. Where the Super Blast, I think, wipes the other two, 
and I think we can get rid of the Nova Blast 3 right now because we've got the Super Blast. Because what you do with this shoe, you do with this shoe. And this shoe is better at it and it's more grippier. So goodbye Nova Blast. Nova Blast 3, you're gone. Super Blast does absolutely everything. Everything. Your easy runs, your long days, daily trainer, no worries. Um, and the easy run includes your recovery run. Intervals, I wore this last night for my interval session. Um, and yeah, if you want to race, if I turned up to a race and I meant to bring my race shoe and I only brought the Super Blast, uh, I, I'd be totally okay with that. There'd be no excuses. Doesn't come with the plate, so if you want to take it to the gym, absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. And if you were going to be 100%, you knew you were going to be on road the whole time, this wins it. If you think you're going to be off road and you don't want to rip up your Super Blast because they are expensive, a good value for money, Shoots, because you're gonna. I think you're gonna get a thousand k's out of these. Mine's 500 k's old, and it's going so strong, so strong, and there's a lot of outsole left in it. And some of those initial patterns you see in the outsole are still there. So it's not like the outsole sort of worn off those initial patterns, and now we're getting into just reducing the um, the depth of the tread. In some places, it still looks really fresh. I think I'm gonna rock it past a thousand k's on this. Um, will the foam hold up? Don't know, but let's find out. Let's find out. And that's why I think the shoe's good value. Expensive, but great value. Okay, and then the invincible. So, 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 what would determine the winner? Actually, you decide, and you let me know in the comments below. But if I was going to be on road the whole time, I knew I wasn't going to be off road at any point or anything too gravelly or was going to rip up the bottom of my shoe, this one wins it for sure. For sure! For sure, where if I'm not going to be doing any park runs quickly and um, giving anything a nudge, it's going to be, I'm only going to be going away for about a week, I'm going to be taking it easy, then, and there might be some off-road running, then I'll take the Invincible 3. If it's going to be longer than a week, then who knows, right? And then I'm going to be mixing it up, mixing up my training, then I'm back to... Um, the Super Blast, especially if it's on road. Would I take both of these? Well, I mean, that's the whole point of the video, right? If you were to take one. So, on road, no off road at all. This, this wins, clearly, clearly. So, let's leave it there. That's it. There's our winner, the Super Blast. I don't, those who know me probably know that that's not a surprise. Not a surprise to me. That wasn't predetermined. I was authentically just grabbing these shoes talking about them and making a decision. This is the one shoe that will do it all. So, I'm going away, only can take one shoe, this is it, and I don't fall short on anything. It ticks all the boxes. Oh wow, well, I've talked way too much. Hit subscribe, if you've made it to the end, I should have said this at the start, please hit subscribe. Oh, I'd love to get to 300 subscribers. Whoo! Just can't imagine that. That would be huge. Help me out. I would love it. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care. See you. Bye.